we have to impart on our students the very importance, not necessarily of pursuing entrepreneurship, but thinking innovatively, seeing continuous improvement as key and watchword, and finding new areas of expression. Too many of them go into the traditional areas and then think with their race and not their imaginations and blame it on white business squeezing out black businesses, which is a low-level kind of analysis because you miss the nature of capitalism. Established dealers in a particular area of capitalist enterprise will behave the same way regardless of the color. They will lock out, price out, outmarket any new entrant that seeks to unsettle the dominance in a particular kind of entrepreneurial uh, uh, expression. I'll leave you with this. I'm always reminded. I had a chat with Neil Ferguson once from the Harvard Business School. And we had a nice discussion at a conference. And he was talking about business explosion, the explosion of entrepreneurship. But he was speaking about the Caribbean country experience. I said, you just can't recommend entrepreneurship for its own sake. And where we agreed is at the point where we both recognize that capitalism does not present enough neutral space for all countries and firms to succeed at the same time. We have to take care that the same old folks don't get rewarded in the same traditional ways. In plainer terms, I thought it was plain then, but in plainer terms, there's an orgy of interest based on the application of photovoltaics onto roofs for the production of electricity. The PVs, the, the photovoltaic material is imported, not stock and barrel. And then applied as a service, and we're told that we're giving rise to a new kind of entrepreneurial thrust. That is not going to crack up the dominance of minus seven, the dominance of merchant capital oriented activities. We have to incentivize innovation in this area. There are entrepreneurs out there involved in renewable energies that are manufacturing what is called the mounts to the panels, the, 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 the apparatus that is used to mount the PVCs. There are one or two entrepreneurs that are actually, through innovation, manufacturing the mounts. Some of them call it racks, or SEKs. But we recognize that government procurement in this area has become a free for all. So there's one instance where one million square feet of government roof space is going to be awarded to one entrepreneur who is importing everything, then that could be awarded to several players based on their bids and based on the manufacturing, sorry, based on the innovations at the level of mounting the, the, so, uh, the, the, the PVs and based on the customer service innovative customer service. There are entrepreneurs that have a one-stop shop operation. You don't have to go to a bank to get the financing to put on your roof. You go to the company and financing is made available on the spot right there. That's an innovation. That's in the, in the direction of customer service. There are some that are offering warranties and guarantees based on the, the outside manufacturer's uh, warranty. So you import the PVCs and so on with a five-year warranty. The service provider is offering you a five-year warranty. But there are others that are saying, we're offering you a 25-year warranty. 
meaning that the inverter, the panels, and the mount will be replaced as they go through the normal state of disrepair at the expense of the company. Now I just, I just went into the nitty gritty of what is on offer in the direction of just one area, solar electricity and the erection of photovoltaic panels. And I'm saying the die is already cast on the complexion of that sector. That sector is beginning to mimic and become quite and repeat the same kinds of patterns of um, behavior reminiscent of, the, of a society that has long passed that social democratic moment where the world afforded countries like ours set of props and palliatives to keep the national option going. Those props and palliatives are no more there. You have to fight, you have to earn your way, you have to compete, you have to trade openly, and so on. That means that the party of development has been rooted on giving, breathing new life to a different kind of entrepreneur, incentivizing those, those traditional entrepreneurs who've also gone in different directions, like Goddard's and so on. You sort of disparagingly refer to any attempts at local entrepreneurial expression as local. Anyone living in Barbados, living in the Caribbean, will understand why local has become, in our lexicon, a term of disparagement. Local meaning inferior. Our love for brands has nothing to do with Caribbean produced goods. Our love for brands has everything to do with foreign produced goods. The brand loyalty we develop is shaped by a mindset that presumes superiority in the production and making of things outside of the region and assumes inferiority in certain efforts inside. How do you crack up the dominance of merchant capital culture after hundreds of years of this kind of condition, social condition? This is where the state comes in. This is where agencies dedicated to address the question of assisting entrepreneurs comes in. We're at the threshold of something new. Uh, you could call it crisis, you could call it opportunity. But we've come to a point where our development paradigm that rested heavily on the discretionary spend of North Americans and Western Europeans is facing its deepest and most serious crisis. The manifestation of the Great Recession, the impact of that Great Recession on countries like ours is witnessed by the narrowing of the productive base in our economies by the drain up of our foreign exchange earning capacities, and by the high cost of social reproduction of ourselves in our various classes and groups. It is also this is in relation to how we do development in these parts. We rely heavily on uh, tourism, we rely heavily on international business, but as I said earlier, that relies heavily on the discretionary spend of those high net worth individuals and others interested in a tourist experience. And now that we've come to that juncture, we recognize that decolonization has left behind some unfinished business. And that is the transition from the dominance of a particular kind of entrepreneurial elite to a more innovative driven, industrially rooted economic class. All societies have gone through periods where the wealthy elite undergo transformation 
in relation to its business and entrepreneurial horizons. In a new subgroup from within that elite emerges to constitute the leading economic class. You show me a society that is grouped under developed countries, and I'll point to you the leading economic class, the character and the orientation of their business, the nature of investment that they invite or apply, and you would always recognize that it's rooted in certain kinds of value-added, innovative-driven uh, uh, horizons and, um, and, and, and field. So that, in essence, Barbados has long been, Eastern Caribbean has long been, rooted in import trading, insurance, banking, commercial agriculture, international business. And this has, for the entrepreneurs enmeshed therein, provided the lumps of profit to sustain their own social reproduction and to sustain a pattern of accumulation in the society and economy sufficient to provide robust jobs, sufficient to um, improve the credit rating of the country in order for the country and the state managers to make good on buying, <clears throat> buying international loans and so on. All I'm saying is that 2008, September 15th, a Monday, viscerally, liminally, that paradigm came crashing down with the collapse of Lehman Brothers. The orgy of runaway consumerism and finance that was seen a middle strata, not only here, but in North America and much of the Western world, living high on credit, moving from thrift to spendthrift, a world that marked a capitalism moving from production-based capitalism to one that's based on finance, where once the economy mastered finance, finance would come to master the economy, that era came crashing to an end. And in the meltdown, one by one, each country has had to face up to the nature and orientation of its development policy, of the kind of entrepreneurship that it needs to incentivize, and the need to relook patterns of accumulation. I've just identified a pattern of accumulation that took us this far. And I'm identifying for you that that pattern of accumulation, while it will allow for some firms and some businesses to continue to exercise leverage and continue to sustain the business operation, it will not take the society towards achieving that goal left behind by decolonization, which is a transition from the dominance of a traditional wealthy elite ensconced in merchant capital related activity towards a new elite ensconced in production oriented fields of activity. <laughs>